We're going to hear a ring in just a moment, but let me, uh, let me uh, preface our call to worship with this morning with this. March in like a lion, out like a jerk. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm in trouble. God broke the bell. <laughs> Hold on. I think you're both right. I, I see both of them pushing. So one's turning it on, one's turning it off, one's turning them on. Let's see what happens. Only one person. She's got it, Jeff. There it is. You got to wait. Sometimes it takes, as it gets a little older, we move a little slower. When it's a little, there's the bell. I think that warrants a round of applause. Don't ring it again. Don't push it again. We let it ring out. Just push once and stop. <laughs> it's so much fun to watch these two because I see Carla with her remote and I see Jeff with his remote. And I'm like, why is it not ringing? It's confused. That's why it's not ringing. <laughs> And, and just so everybody knows, we push it once and let go, and then it rings for 60 seconds. All right, calling us to stand for our call to worship with words from Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression, transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. I'm still thinking about bells. Happy are those. Well, you can hear there's more than 32 this Sunday. <laughs> Many are torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Let us worship God. Please remain standing and join with me in our hymn of preparation, Standing on the Promises. Don't pay attention to how it's written in there. We're going to sing it our way. Number 69.
standing on the promises. And I, I have to tell you, standing up here and watching you look, some of you look through your hymnal trying to find, you know, am I on the right page? And, and it's, you're kind of like a Disney movie where finally by the end of the cartoon, you're willing to just go with it. Yet we don't sing it the way it's written. Just go with it. <laughs> Please join with me in our prayer of approach that you will find printed in your bulletin. Thank you, God, for being the God of the lost. Thank you for sending your Son to show us the way. Thank you for your patience with us as we wander away from your path again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. seated. It's great to have you up here, Dave. So it's always hard to It's always hard to find uh, to choose music. Um, especially if I try and wait like the week of uh, just in case anything happens. Well, it's not hard to, I really didn't have to wait the week of this time because you turn on the, the TV or the, whatever you're listening to and there's so much stuff going on between Russia and uh, COVID revamping and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, ch choose, your, choose your song. Um, I thought in this case though, chose one called uh, Mercy Now by Susan, Susan Gaither, and it's a great song about mercy in that during any time, I mean, there's always something going on in the world, wars, rumors, the world are wars, um, so, you know, it is what it is, uh, but I think the most important thing to remember during any of it is the uh, love of the Lord and that his mercy is unending. And so this song is kind of aimed in that direction, and it's a prayer for the world and all of us. So. Father, could use a little mercy now. The fruits of his labor rot slowly on the ground. Work's almost over, won't be long till he's not around. my father hey, you could use a little mercy now My 
brother Yeah, you're the little mercy now He's a stranger to freedom He's shackled to his fear and his doubt The pain that he lives in It's almost more than living with a loud I love my brother He could use some mercy now My church and my country could use a little mercy now. As some sink into a poison pit, it's gonna take forever to climb out. They carry the weight of the faithful, some of them follow them down. My church and my country, well, they could use some mercy now. Every little thing Can use a little mercy now Only the hand of grace Can end the race towards Another mushroom cloud The people in power Where they'll do anything Keep their crown I love life and life itself could use a little mercy here now. Yeah, we all could use a little mercy now. I know we don't deserve it, but hey, we need it anyhow. We hang in the balance, hey, we dangle between hell and hallowed ground. Every single one of us could use a little mercy now. Yeah, every single one of us could use a little mercy now. Dave's untying himself. <laughs> it's a small stage. What a beautiful job. Thank you. At this time, I would invite all of the children in the sanctuary to come on down to the front. All of the children, you're welcome. Come on down. Hey! <laughs> yes, I told Oliver that I was going to wear that outfit that superhero outfit this morning test 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 dead mic dead mic dead mic test 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 not working not working not working test 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 is it is it something we can fix jeff or do we just go without it 
He's got it. There we go. Now it's working. One, two, three, good morning. Good morning. Wow. I didn't even give him any warm up. Boy, maybe that's the trick with the choir. You know, just one, two, three, three, sing. <laughs> okay, hey, I've got, I gotta get something because I'm looking. I've, I've lost them, so I got, I got, I, I went to my secretary, Ruth's <laughs> desk. I got her flashlight. <laughs> it was free from Consumers Energy. Yeah, free. Try not playing your bill. Free. <laughs> okay, and I'm using it. Can you see? I'm using it. Can you open your mouth really wide? Lean, put your head back. There they are. I was looking for my tonsils. Oh, oh, well, I'll look over here. There they are. Oh, doesn't anyone keep their tonsils anymore? Oh. Oliver, how about you? Oh, there they are. Oh, none of you have time. Okay, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for something else that I've lost. <laughs> okay, is there anyone? Where could my hair? There it is. There it is. There, yeah, it, yeah, mine just slipped back. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, it kind of, it, I know. Thank you, because... They were, we had a scavenger hunt and they had to check off a list of people. One of the lists was bald and everyone kept coming to me and I'm saying, look back here. I have, this is thick and luxurious. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. I have to, I have to practice throwing my locks back. But I don't want to practice too hard because it makes me a little dizzy. <laughs> I got to be perfectly honest. I no, Oh, you like it when I'm dizzy, huh? Uh, you like it to be dizzy. There, when you get, yeah, okay. There, yeah, dizzy can be fun, like on a like on a roller coaster. But dizzy can also not be fun, as some of us know. Okay, so but anyway, my Bible passage this morning talks about looking it does it talks about looking and it tells stories about people who have found things that are precious to them for example the one story talks about a woman who lost a coin and she only had a few and so that coin was very very precious and she looked everywhere she cleaned her entire she said stop don't anybody move and she picked up all of the furniture, and she looked under the, the cushions. That's where most of our coins are. Under the cushions, she looked in the ashtray. I mean, the Bible tells all these wonderful stories. She looked, and she finally, guess what happened? She found it. Under the cushions, you're I, it doesn't say, but I think it was the ashtray. Oh, there you go. That's a great spot to look. Well, the next story tells about a person who had animals. Some of you have animals? All of you have animals? You all, and, and one of the animals ran away. And they were worried. And so this man went and he knew where her, the rest of his animals were. They were safe. And so he went out and he looked, at, he looked everywhere. He got his flashlight out and he called the animal name, name, Princess, Princess, where are you? That was the name of the sheep. It's in, it's in the Greek. Princess. And then guess what happened? It was a happy ending. He found the sheep. And you know what the Bible said he did? He picked it up because he was so happy. He didn't even want it to walk back. He picked it up and he threw it over his shoulders. And as he was walking back home, he said, Everybody, look, I found my sheep. No, it was important because if you've ever lost something, and that's a good point. If you've ever lost something and you found it, you know how wonderful that feels for someone else. And if you've lost something and didn't find it, how do we feel? We feel 
sad. And so I will tell you that sometimes we lose things and we think, oh, it's just going to be. Sometimes we lose people that we love. Sometimes, you know, when, 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 or our grandmas or, or grandpas or great grandmas or grandpas and they go to heaven and we, it feels like we've lost them. But the Bible tells us that we can know that we're going to find them again. Because that's the story of the Bible, that we're going to be with them again. And, that is, and that's what resurrection means. It's a huge word. But that means we're going, because Jesus has found us, and we will be together again. And we won't have to be apart from the people we love and we've lost. Oh, you are just an amazing superhero. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. And we're going to say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. You're doing good knots there. That Jesus taught his disciples to pray. It goes like this, and all of you can help. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Oh, you're, you're all tied up. Here, I will pull the string. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. <laughs> oh. Do you know what I've lost? I've lost that energy. I have it in little, little bits, but boy, oh boy, when you're that young, you, you know, summer goes on forever, and you know, you can build forts in, in, in the sandlot and pull the board over, and you've made a private place to hide and spend, you know, oh, hours and hours, which probably are minutes, but they feel like hours. And, or going into the lilac bushes. That was something that we did. Um, we would go into the lilac bushes. That was like God made a fort for us. It was just wonderful. Grandma always loved that. What she didn't love was finding pieces of toilet paper in there. But uh, those were the amazing, amazing times of our childhood. Good morning. And welcome, a special welcome to those of you that may be visiting us today. We are happy that you're here. Uh, we truly are. I would invite everyone to, to find the... the uh... Thank you. I wanted to say pew. Friendship pad in the pew rack in front of you. I knew the word pew was in there. To find the friendship pad, open it up, sign your name, pass it down the pew unless you're alone. <laughs> pass it down the pew. Then let it come back open that you might greet that person by name just a little bit later in the service. Uh, and also to recognize the people who are watching us as we live stream. Uh, we are truly blessed to be able to be, I, I'm assuming Jeff, it's working. <laughs> that's, always, that's always a good assumption. But uh, um, it's wonderful to come into your homes. And I will reach out to my international friends and uh, Fernando in particular. And Fernando, uh, God bless you in this time of your loss. I know your mother and you were so close. Uh, God's blessings and peace to you. Um, what is lost will be found, and we will be together again. God's grace. Um, you know, it's, it's important for us to remember that we are larger than just what we see. And um, the, the, the boundaries that are, are artificial lines on our map are simply that. Um, and, of course, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Um, and I know that many of you have given donations. Thank you. Um, if you want to do so, either if you're on the internet and seeing us on the internet, you can, you can go to our website, slpc.org. There's a PayPal button, and just in the memo line, write Ukraine. And 100% of that just goes through us. Uh, we send it to Presbyterian Disaster Relief, and we designate it to the people of Ukraine. So you can rest assured that your gift is secure. Um, and the same thing here, if you're worshiping with us, uh, if you want to take in your, your check on the, on the memo line, just write Ukraine, and we will make certain that that money is channeled in the appropriate direction. 
Um, yeah, and I don't know if you heard President Biden's comment uh, about uh, Putin and uh, the, the need for what we are calling, the critics are calling a regime change. And I heard the most wonderful analysis that uh, this morning on the news, that the news broadcaster said, a faux pas in Washington is a politician accidentally speaking the truth. <laughs> You know, regardless of your political stance, I think there's wisdom in that comment. You know, when we, when we, what a sh what a shame when we're criticized for saying what we really believe. <laughs> you know, but uh, God bless us one and all. And what I pray is that God will, will uh, touch Putin's heart and and elicit the change that needs to come from within. Uh, and that is a message that I would give to myself and to all of us as well, that God would help us change from within. Are there any other announcements that need to be lifted up? I know the bullet. Oh, yes, I do. Ruth is like, has he looked at his note or not? All right. Donations of Easter hues. Oh, hams. <laughs> okay. You got a print for me. <laughs> Uh, are now being received. Donated hams can be delivered to the downstairs kitchen, fridge, or freezer. Um, and nobody make a comment about the pastor going down to the kitchen, fridge, or freezer. Uh, yes, it takes a second, but that will sink in. So donations of Easter hams, thank you uh, for your generosity in the past, and thank you for your generosity to help families uh, in this season of Lent as they celebrate the upcoming um, special Sunday of Easter Sunday. Ham was always the big thing at our house. I know people have different traditions, but that was always our big thing. Please take the bulletin home. It is filled. It is a weekly newsletter. It talks about Easter flowers. It talks about a pop-up concert that's coming April 9th. It talks about uh, the money that has been raised to date that has gone to Presbyterian Disaster Relief, $3,324 raised to date to help the people of Ukraine. So thank you for your gracious generosity. A lot of good things in there. The men's uh, prayer breakfast, the women's Lenten uh, event. So please, please be aware of that. Any other announcements? Please stand up and say good morning to the person standing next to you. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine, even though it does not warm our earth at this time and place. We even thank you for the cold air that may be of help to those we're preparing maple syrup this spring. We're always seeking to find the positive. But Lord, we look forward to the season of change that is just ahead. The opportunity to spend more time outside and working in our yards and working in partnership with nature as we see new life emerge. We pray, Lord, for a people to whom all, of the, all they see is destruction, 
of the places and the things they love. We ask, Lord, that those who suffer such would feel renewal in their hearts and the assurance of spring. We pray, Lord, for those every day who lose loved ones. And in the midst of their sorrow, Lord, we pray that they would know the assurance that resurrection is true and the promise that we will be together again. For those who need your healing touch, Lord, we give praise and thanks as we lift them before you. For we are a people of faith. We pray all these things, and in our hearts, we lift up ourselves in silent prayer. Keep us in your caring grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Our gospel reading this morning continues in the gospel of Luke. Reading Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 32. It's a lengthy but familiar passage to many of you. Luke chapter 15, reading verses 1 through 32. Listen for the word of God. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so. I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property and dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled 
with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly put out a robe the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field and When he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of his slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen. For all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then his father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts, our ears, our minds, our hearts, and our spirits to a new and deeper understanding of your truth. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just had a, um, a vision of memory, which comes in bits and pieces, and I'm I, it was, yes, a film that I saw many, many years ago. It was filmed in black and white. Um, and because I didn't think about it as a preparation for my message, I still have to lift up the thought that came into my mind just now. Uh, so the character, I'm going to miss the names. But it was the story of the little girl, I believe in France, who had a vision of Mary. And she was just in, she stood by her word, and of course she was taken to the local parish priest, and and the parish priest was in some ways rather stern, because the parish priest knew that if she was telling people of a vision that she had, a, a spiritual vision, there were only two options. One was that the church would judge it as a miracle, The other was that she would be considered insane and institutionalized for the rest of her life. Those were the realities that she faced. And yet she stood her ground and said, this is what I saw. This is what was said to me. As the the story plays itself out in this film, later she is uh, put into a convent because she is taken out, and they do consider it a miracle. But there is resentment by others in the church. There is one particular nun who is so cruel to her and considers her a person who just wants attention brought to herself. They, they changed her name so people would not know who it was, but she was forced to walk in this discipline of prayer, and she was limping, and the nun in this particular scene, and the older sister, the older nun, uh, points out to the authority, the priest, that there she is once again, that narcissist. 
All she is doing is seeking attention. And suddenly, the young lady falls, crumpling to the ground. And the nun is disgusted and crosses her arms. Until she learns that she's suffering from a cancer. A tumor that has gone through the skin and flesh and all the way into the bone. And the, the older nun hears the doctor say, I can't believe that she has not brought this to her, your attention. This would be unbearably painful. Prior to that, the older nun had said, how can God have used you to give you this simplistic child this vision when I have lived a life of religious discipline? When I have truly suffered, how could God reward you? Where is the justice in that? And suddenly she realizes that what she considered her own suffering did not even measure compared to the suffering of this young woman. Physically, yes, but emotionally, because she was sharing her truth and the people scoffed at her and judged her. She was lifting up truth and suffered because of it. one really gets me because you know I'm emotional until she dies she never takes another step because the older nun carries her wow that's redemption that's double redemption when, when those in a position of authority who are judging and misusing their power and causing pain and suffering to the innocent, to the truth tellers, and sadly are part of the religious institution that would give us grace and peace, but do not. And suddenly the change of hearts of the older nun who then carries her the rest of, her, rest of her life. At least that was the director's portrayal. But what a powerful message. What a powerful story. This is exactly the dynamic that Jesus is facing when the scribes and the Pharisees, once again, I know, it seems like this is all, this is like a tape on Rewind. But you realize it leads up to the crucifixion. And, and it's a beautiful metaphor to, to carry this message that we think because we pray daily and we give graciously and we do all of these things that we think we should be rewarded for, that we are somehow elevated in God's eyes. Above the rest of creation. The people understood the stories of a person responsible as a shepherd and his flock. And there is more there than just the, the, the business relationship, but literally the responsibility to care for. And then the good shepherd would lay down his life for his sheep. Jesus says. We understand the, the, the reality of, of losing something precious to us and, and then the joy that we find when, when we discover it again. In each of those cases, Jesus follows, us up, follows up the story by saying, this is what it's like. This is what it's like in heaven. There is rejoicing in heaven when one who is lost is found. When a sinner repents. And, and maybe even the spiritual leaders can accept those stories. 
because they're thinking of the others who are the sinners, not themselves. And then Jesus goes right in to the story of the parable. And absolutely, we all can agree that the one young son was foolish and wasted his inheritance on sinful living. But there is this moment, this cathartic moment, when truth suddenly breaks through and he realizes his sin. And in his mind, he prepares his speech to give to his father. But what I love about the story is that even before he utters the word that he will, Father, I have sinned against you and before God. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Accept me as one of your slaves. Even before he utters the word, the father sees him and runs. Biblical scholars have, have unpacked the story, and they say that the, the, the elder patriarch would be wearing a long robe, and he would pick up his robe in order to run and to embrace. Before the words are spoken, the father rejoices on his son's return. And then the party, the celebration begins. And then the good son, the righteous son, the one who, is, who has been disciplined and, and obedient, stands outside the building and will not even enter in. And in that moment, absolutely disrespects his father and causes his father to come out to him unheard of in that society. But we've already seen the gentle nature, the loving nature of this father. And the son rants and rages I deserve what you've given to this, you call your son. And the father responds, everything I have is yours. But we must rejoice. You see, he'd done everything right. The son had done everything right, but he still didn't have the heart to forgive. We must rejoice. The Father is urging him to understand. Because this son of mine, brother of yours, was dead. And now he is alive. This is the message of the gospel. That God loved us so much that before the words were spoken of repentance, he sent his only begotten son to die. To open the door and welcome us back in. This is the gospel. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we ask this day as the prodigal that you would forgive us and welcome us back into your home. For those of us who have turned away and rejected you, we return humbly. And Lord, we pray today for the Pharisees among us, for those that judge without looking into their own eyes and at their own sin, that you would forgive us as well and help us to welcome the sinners. In Jesus' name, amen.
Our hymn of praise, number 234, He is Lord. Let's stand together and sing. Lord God, receive these gifts from our hearts, our time, our talents, our treasure. Let everything we lift before you be yours for your honor and your glory and the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now return unto God a portion of what is already his, our tithes and our offerings. Sometimes we got to remember that uh, God's power and God's interaction is not subtle. Sometimes uh, he rattled some walls and destroyed cities and, you know, did what he needed to do. And uh, Jericho, you know, it's one of those. Uh, this song is uh, called uh, Jericho. And God, sometimes when we, we ask, will come into our lives and shake things up and uh, that's kind of what this is uh, this is about and feel free to join in on the chorus or clapping or whatever you want to do even if you've never heard this song before uh, and yes there's drums which uh, I asked Dan if that was okay and he sent me a picture of a guy playing a drum it was really cool so I, I'm assuming he meant that was okay so uh, Desi Arnaz. Yeah. yeah oh was that what that was that's pretty funny <laughs> All right, I love this song. I hope I can make it work. So. Oh, Lord, my prison turns to ruin. What 
Okay, in my mind, as, as they're singing that wonderful song, and, and Dave shared the, the message, the text between us, I suddenly had this vision again, I should know better, <laughs> but of, of this army marching around the walls of Jericho, holding their drums up and shouting, Babaloo! <laughs> anyway, it's probably not how it happened. Our hymn of faith, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, number 621.
And now, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.